for inviting me. I will try to be clear on my on my lecture. I will first start saying that uh, there are a lot of things that we need to know before starting implanting a micro. Actually, my lecture is about best, best practices in micro. My disclosures, yes, my interest is not having uh, disclosures, but unfortunately, I'm Proctor of Medtronic and Vitatron. But for today, I will please ask you to consider me as Jiminy the Cricket, because I'm going to give you some tips in order to start a good, really good implantation method. Uh, if we start seeing pacemaker evolution, we'll have like a almost 70 years journey from the very start of pacing to what we have now in days with Micra. The evolution of the technology is amazing. And it's only, uh, the only thing that it's superior to that is the demand that we need for clinical issues and for safety issues. We are repeating history. Actually, we have already passed for the single chamber pacemaker in conventional pacemakers. Now we have that on Micra as well. We have also the AB synchrony, and also we're seeking, we're behind this biventricular pacing in micro in experimental animal trials. Now we are considering conventional uh, pacing. We are considering going always to the physiologic pacing. And now we are dreaming with a physiologic lidless pacing. That's part of our investigation, our research. Micro implantation, it's better to do it step by step following the recommendations. At least if you are starting with the technique, it is very important to follow the recommendations from Medtronic. It is important what uh, what you have already mentioned, that you need to know the tools because you need to actually know how deep you can go, how hard you can move, and that's very important in order to have proper mm -hmm. results. Use your learning tools. You have Medtronic Academy, you have simulators. Please start using it before starting with the implantation. Train your team, that's very important. In order to win a match, you need to have a strategy before, and that's very important. I strongly recommend that. Telling the cases, as the previous one discussed, it, you will always have that. Consider to have a surgeon backup always, at least in the very first cases, until you have uh, reached that learning curve. It is a very good idea to have a surgeon on your site or at least on call. Once you're expert, you can create your own way. You can change things, but at the very beginning, try to follow the recommendations in order to warranty your results in safety. Today, we will discuss about getting all set tools and stuff. First, patient. Fasting is a good idea. Then you will consider either conscious sedation or general anesthesia. Prepare or study your groin, especially if you think that it will be a difficult case. Maybe consider a ultrasound before going to the procedure. It is a good idea. Prophylaxis, antibiotics, yes, it's the recommendation, at least one doses. Uh, no need to stop anticoagulants, that's important advantage of Micra above uh, the conventional procedure. Temporary pacing should also be considered, especially if you have a high-risk patients, and especially if you are doing your first steps in Micra implantation, because once you enter to the right ventricle, you could have uh, an asystolia or a complete AB block. That, that's not uh, a good idea, because with Micra, you cannot just start pacing to have a safety procedure, so you need to, to go farther, and sometimes you need to seek for a lot of positions, so if you have the risky patient, then try to go in with safety backups. To implant, please always do like a checklist, always check for the material. If you don't have enough guide wires, scalpel, suture, syringe, always use a 50 milliliters syringe and have everything on the room before starting. Saline and manitol, it's very important. Prepare the manitol, at least a two lumen manitol. The first one would be for a non eparanized saline, the second one for a contrast, and you also need an eparanized saline for the introducer with continuous infusion. Then what we need to have as a backup equipment, we strongly recommend vascular ultrasound. Uh, it is always important to have a defibrillator, external defibrillator with transcutaneous patches. And in our team in Latin America, we're using Synchromax, not as uh, a necessity for the procedure, but yes, as part of our researching tool. What we hope not to use, but needs to be in the room once we start, uh, fishing tools, micro introducer, loop snare, agilis, shit, should always be there. Maybe we don't need them. At least most of the cases, we don't need them, but it is important to be at the time that we have a complication. A tamponet kit, pericardiosynthesis kit, protamine, it's very important, and an echocardiogram, it's also recommended to have, to have it near the place. Tools, learning tools, we have also discussed about this, the micro capsule, the micro introducer, the micro delivery catheter. We need to know that this is a very um, wide introducer. It's 27 French outer lumen, but it is also hydrophilic, so it's prepared to be wide, so it's not difficult to go in. This is very important to know. This is the delivery system, the delivery catheter. We have the micro here in the tip. We have three buttons that we need to know how to use. This is the lock, tether lock. This is the deflection button. And this is the deployment button. Very important to know and not 
com get confused with the position of the buttons. Once you want to, to deliver, to deploy, you go, you do this maneuver that is called the gooseneck, we will talk about this later, and then you release. It is important to know that once you release, you are you also have control of the of the micro in case you have to recapture it and reposition mm -hmm. to another place. So this is what you do. You can deflect, you can liberate the tethers, lock tethering, and you can deploy the system. So now it's time to do a step-by-step -step with some tips that I can give you. The complete procedure we all know, but we will, mm -hmm. oh, we will start step-by-step -step here. First, the first thing is to set your working desk. This is very important to put all in order, to flash the introducer, to flash the deleter, to flash inside the delivery catheter. We will do that. Then the puncture, it is strongly recommended to have a echo-guided puncture. Very important because once you're in, you don't only want to know that you're in vain, but also the position of the puncture is very important, as you can see here. Okay, so you go in, and once you're in, you need a very perpendicular puncture. like this, there's a huge difference between puncturing the vein like this and puncturing more tangential. Because as you have a very wide introducer, it is not a good idea to be in this position because you can have complications like that. So once you're in, you need to dilate. Actually, we're thinking that it is very important to proper to go with the proper deep dissection more than dilation. Because most of the times you're worried about how to dilate if you go to mm -hmm. 10 to 12 to 14 French, to go to 18 French. Actually, we have noticed that if you do a proper dissection, the fact of going increasing dilatation, it's not so important. But yes, the recommendation is to do it. So we follow the first recommendation. Look at this. It is very different to go mm -hmm. with the introducer from the very tip, very different that from what you can do if you take a gasa and if you go from the very tip of the introducer near the skin by doing this rotating movement and going in it is much better to do it that way because you are taking control of the whole leg of the introducer so that's what we recommend hold the introducer with a gasa entering point don't forget to activate the hydrophilic with saline and check for fluoroscopy once you're going up it is always recommended to go together with the introducer, go up to the heart with fluoroscopy. Then it is important to flush the delivery catheter, never hit the tip, never hit with your finger in order to take out the bubbles because you can damage the accelerometer. So that's not a good idea and that's not recommended. Once you go in, you just enter with the delivery catheter and you go up. For this, you won't actually need fluoroscopy because you have two colors in the delivery catheter, one that is blue and the other black. Once you reach the limit between blue and black, you know they're in the tip of the introducer, so you don't need to do fluoroscopy for that. But yes, you have then to retract the introducer and leave the delivery catheter in the right atrium. This is recommended to do in an RAO position on the fluoroscopy. Then you want to pass the tricuspid bulb. The tip here is try to go in the RAO projection in order to know that you're passing the AB union, and then you can go in. For this, it is very recommended to go in with the deflection button so you can manage a very smooth entering to the right ventricle. Once you're in, you can release the deflection button, and then you can start positioning against the septum. When you're in, you just turn clockwise to the position of 3 to 4 p.m., then you will be against the septum if you are in a projection of a LAO. And it can also be confirmed that you're in the right ventricle in an RAO. Then you can put a little bit of contrast. For this, for this is very important to know that you don't need to press before injecting contrast. Because if you do a gooseneck before injecting contrast, you won't see how the contrast is escaping. So it's better just to touch a little bit the septum and then you inject. After the contrast, you can do the pressure that you need in order to know that you are against the septum and you are with very good contact. That is the so-called was maneuver. Oh, this is my daughter's. No, this is just to show you, actually, because I still don't have a daughter, hopefully soon. But this is just to show you that this is the so-called was neck maneuver that helps us to know that we are in a good contact and also a good pressure against the wall. Every time you see a was neck, 
in the delivery catheter, then you can know that you have a good pressure against the wall and that will lead you to good deployment. So if you have this curve and if you have this other curve, then you can realize that it's time to start deploying. The first step will be this, actually. You go from the very tip to the middle part of the, if you see a square here in the micro, that's the battery. So you go first to that point and then you release in a second time but first you need to release a little bit the pressure so once you're there you have the tines against the the wall and then you can release the woos neck and release totally deploy the system so that's what's recommended deployment should be always in two times first one to the middle then you release the pressure and then you go to the very end of the deployment button then you can do this maneuver that it's called the pull and hold just take the tethers you just gently pull the tethers and you feel how the heartbeat try to get the tether in. So that's what you need to know. And at the same time, you need to zoom and to do a fluoroscopy. You can do a scene actually. So you can, in a second time, you can analyze frame by frame and you accept as correct if it has at least two or four times. If that's okay, then you go to the next step that it's the electricals. In this point, as the technical part do its job, like measuring and doing the threshold test, then you as doctor, you need to flush inside the system. Why? Because you have tethers, you have contrast, and contrast could be very sticky. If you don't do this at this time, you are at risk of having complication. So remember, when you are doing electrical, try to flush. Otherwise, you can lose the system. Look at this, are the electrical, the optimal electrical values are threshold below one, R wave above five, and impedance could be above 400. It is optimal above 800. There's a publication about this, a paper that it's telling us that if you don't have the initial, the initial optimal values, then don't worry, just wait a little bit. If you have at least an impedance above 800 during the time you're doing the flash, then you test again. And sometimes, most of the times, you get better results, better values. The first values could be a bit damaged because of the inflammation that you caused during the procedure. Don't forget to flash, please flash, because otherwise you can have actually this. Once you're flashing, please put your finger here, because otherwise you will you will have all the saline to the wrong, wrong way. This is what could happen with a sticky tether. This patient had this complication. The doctor forgot to flush inside the system and look what happened. They took all the microsystem with part of the wall. So unnecessary complication. If you need to capture again, if you don't have the good values of implantation, then go ahead, but make sure that you are very well aligned with the system because otherwise you can damage the cup and it will be very difficult to try again the implantation or you can damage the whole system. So first align and then you can re-enter with the delivery catheter and catch and do the whole procedure again. Once you're good, then you just cut the tethers. For that, you do this maneuver that you pull each tether of each side and you see where you have more resistance. Then you cut that tether and you start pulling the whole tether let out of the system. So you take out that you deliver the whole micro, and then you remove the delivering catheter. That's all the implantation procedure. And now you need to decide if you want to closure with a suture of eight, that it's what we recommend and what we do every day, or if you want to closure with a per close or something similar. But in our recommendation, it's enough with a suture of eight. Step by step, be systematic, follow the recommendation, use learning tools, be ready for possible complication. Once you're expert, you can create your own way. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure for me to be at India last year, and it's a pleasure for me to be here to share this knowledge with you. Thank you very much.